What's good YouTube? It's Almond with the Sauce and I'm back with another video. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about partitioning a line segment. I'm gonna be showing you how to do in a specific example. And then in part two, I'm gonna be showing you how to do it in general for any type of problem. So get your pencil, get your paper, and let's get into it. All right, so this problem tells us to find the coordinates of point P that partition segment AB into a two, three ratio. So there's a couple of things in that problem that I wanna talk about. First of all, we have some point P and we don't know where it is. Let's just put it, it has to go somewhere. So let's just say it's right here. And you're trying to find the coordinates of that point that partition AB into a two to three ratio. And so what partition means is it basically, it divides this big segment up in such a way to where from A to P is two parts and then from P to B is three parts. So if you can imagine this whole thing being divided up into five equal parts, Two of those five parts are from A to P, and then the remaining three parts are from P to B. And so we gotta figure out a way to split that up in such a way that we can find the coordinates of point P. But when I first saw this problem, my first instinct was to just take the distance of A to B using the distance formula, and then take two fifths of that, because if this part is two parts, and P, B is three parts, then the whole thing is five parts. So I know from A to B, that length is two fifths of the entire length. And the distance formula gets you the right distance, but remember, we're trying to find coordinates of that point. So just because we have the distance, we don't know exactly where it falls. So while that is a good idea, there's a better way. And so since we can't count you know, a distance diagonally, we can split it up into a horizontal component and a vertical component and see what happens when we split it up that way. All right, so now that I made a horizontal and a vertical component to, this, to the line segment, I can think of it like this. If I can take side BC and figure out at what point is two fifths along the way, and then take the, the horizontal part AC and figure out what's two fifths along the way on that segment, I can use those two points to help me find the point on AB and that'll be the coordinates of point P that we're looking for. So the way I'm gonna do that is first, I'm gonna find the coordinates of point C. And once I do that, that'll be able to tell me how long this side is, uh, and it'll let me know how long side AC is. And so if you think about it, to get from point B to point C, all I did was drop straight down. I didn't go left or right at all. So my X coordinate should not change. It should be the same thing it was for point B which is two. And then for the Y coordinate, we know to get from point A to C, we didn't move up or down at all. So the Y coordinate should stay the same. And so the Y coordinate of A is the same as what the Y coordinate of C should be. So now what we can do is we can get the lengths of side BC and AC. Let's do that part next. So if I'm, I'm uh, if I'm trying to think about how long this side is, obviously my X coordinates don't really tell me much because I'm not dealing with any horizontal movement. So I can look at the Y coordinates and if this Y coordinate is seven and this Y coordinate is negative eight, then that means it would have gone a distance of 15 to get from seven to negative eight on the number line. And an easier way you can think of that is you can just take the difference of the Y coordinates. So seven minus negative eight that's the same thing as seven plus eight, which is 15. And so that's how I can come up with the length of the vertical side. And I can do the same thing with the X coordinates uh, with the horizontal side, all right? And so thinking about it the same way, if I take the larger X coordinate minus the smaller X coordinate, that'll give me the total distance or the length of that side. So two minus negative eight, that's the same thing as two plus eight, which is just 10. And again, that came from two minus negative eight. The difference in the X coordinates and the difference in the Y coordinates. Now, if I can take those distances and split those up in a two to three ratio, then I'll be in good shape. Let's say we know side BC has a length of 15 and we know side AC 
has a length of what, 10? So again, think of what we're trying to do. We're trying to split AB into such a way to where it's two parts and three parts for five parts total. So this point P is basically two fifths of the length of this whole segment AB. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get two fifths of this length and two fifths of this length. And then that'll help us figure out how to move horizontally and vertically to get to my point P that I'm looking for. And the way we take two fifths of something is simply multiply it by two over five or two fifths. If I'm trying to take two fifths of 15, then I just multiply by two fifths. Same thing with 10. If I'm trying to get two fifths of 10, then I'll multiply it by two fifths. And one other thing that's worth mentioning is that if I take my point P and I draw a perpendicular line straight down, look at what I have. I have a right triangle right here and I have a right triangle right here. And since this angle A is common to both the smaller right triangle and the bigger right triangle, then we can say that these two triangles are similar by angle angle similarity. And so what that means is all of their corresponding ratios are equal. So if I wanted to do like the ratio of the little side to the big side, let's look and see what that ratio is, by the way. My ratio of little side to big side is gonna look something like this. My little side is two. And then the big side is not three, but the entire side is gonna be two plus three or five, but I'm just gonna leave it like two plus three so you can see where the five comes from. So the ratio of any pair of sides is gonna have that two to five ratio. Let's do this first. Let's, let's give names to these points. Let's call it D. And then whatever vertical distance this ends up being, let's call that point E. All right, so now what I can do is I can say that if I know BC is 15, then I know that CE has to be two fifths of it. So I can say that CE is 15 times two fifths. And then the same thing down here, I know that AD, however long that is, is two-fifths of 10. So I'm gonna say 10 times two-fifths. And so the way I can figure out how long that is, I can just multiply across. 15 times two is 30. 30 divided by five is just six. And then 10 times two is 20. 20 divided by five is four. So now that I know that ratio of sides has to be two to five, two to five is equal to any little side over its corresponding big side. So if I wanted to, I can say that the, the little side of here is CE and the big side is CB. So I can say that CE to CB, that ratio has to equal two to five. And I can also say that this bottom side, the ratio of AD to AC is also two to five. So I can just do it like this. AD, which is the little side, and then AC is the big side. So I know that all three of these are equal. And then, of course, the most important one to know is that that's also equal to AP over the big side, which is AB. All right. And so, again, that five comes from two parts plus three parts, totaling five equal parts. All right, so now that I know the length of AD, I can figure out the X coordinate of this point. And I know the Y coordinate is still gonna be the same because it hasn't gone up or down. But my X coordinate, since that distance AD is four, I can go ahead and say my X coordinate plus four will equal the X coordinate of point D. So negative eight plus four, that's just negative four. And then I can do the same thing with the y's. If I know that the length of C to E is six, then I can take my y coordinate and add six to it, and then that'll give me the y coordinate of point E. So I'll just do that in here. You know, the x coordinate is still gonna be two. 
and then the y coordinate is going to be negative 8 plus 6 which will give me negative 2. All right and so now that I have the coordinates of d and the coordinates of e I can figure out the coordinates of point p which is what I'm looking for. All right and so to get those coordinates of point p Think of it as I'm starting at point A and I'm moving over and up to get to point P. So if A, if I'm doing the X's first, if A is at negative eight and then I go over four, then I'm at negative four. So the X coordinate of point P is negative four. And then if I go from a Y coordinate of negative eight, if I go up that distance, of six, then I know negative eight plus six will give me negative two. So that's the Y coordinate of that point. So that is how you get the coordinates of a point. Stick around for part two, where I talk about how to generalize this equation and come up with a way to solve any partitioning problem. So stick around for the next video.